I'm all right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Randall Knutson. I'm the uh, senior developer here at Level 10. I've been here for a little over a year now. And I've been working in Drupal for uh, four years, some odd. Um, absolutely love it. And I'm glad you guys are all uh, at least playing with Drupal as well. Um, I've been using Drupal f long enough to see all of the advancements in the ease of use of the configuration management and all of these things and I'm very excited with where apps is taking us and when I first saw the presentation on apps from DrupalCon uh, where was the last DrupalCon? It was in uh, Chicago. Uh, Chicago. It was, either, it was either in Chicago or, or Paris where when they did the um, I don't remember where this presentation was but I saw the presentation and I was like oh my gosh this is amazing. Um, and I hope you guys have the same reaction today. Has anybody seen apps or heard of apps before? A little bit. Anybody played with them at all or nothing really? So you guys really curious and really have no idea. Does anybody remember the first time they heard about features? Anybody played with features at all? No, we're going we're to get there. It, it, features were awesome. These are even more awesome. So, but we'll get there. And, and um, hopefully it will change the way you start thinking about Drupal and where Drupal is headed. Um, so why are we, why did we have something like apps? So we're going to start there. First of all, um, features did, did amazing things for Drupal. Before we had features, when we went to deploy things, we made a checklist. Well, I went to this page and I changed these settings. And I went to this page and I changed these settings. And I went to this page and I added this content type. And you write it all down on your development server and you go over to the live server and you repeat it as exactly as possible and that's how you move things from one server to another. It was either that or copy the database, right? Features allowed us to do more than that. Um, not only can we bundle features for reuse on another site, but we can move it from one server to another in our dev staging production system. Um, but there were some drawbacks to it. First of all, when we were creating distributions and we wanted to make a reusable feature, like a blog or an events calendar or something like that, you had to include it with the distribution. So what would happen is we would create our open enterprise distribution, there would be open atrium, there'd be all these different distributions out there, and what we would run into is whatever the state of the feature, when I bundle it and sent it off to the client or to whoever downloads my distribution, that's the feature they had, right? And I had to build out every feature that I wanted in my distribution before I sent it to them because it all had to be included in the one download file that they got. So what they get is what they got. And that was the end of the story, unless they went and downloaded and replaced it, which was very scary and hard to do. Right? So that was a big problem. We had poor upgradability with features, especially in distributions. Um, the features often got lost in the modules page. Now, there was a separate features page, but if you go to the modules page, you've got, how many people will get scared by the modules page? There's like, 150 modules in there quite often and you got to find that one little one that turns on your special feature it gets lost so you get a very poor discoverability of features um, you have very difficult installation of features as well a lot of the features that I would create uh, would require 20 modules as dependencies well that's great if I do it in a distribution and I include all 20 of those modules although we end up with 300 modules in the distribution after we include a few features, but you, if I just said, here's a great feature, go use it on your site, you go, great, you go install it on your site. And then when you go to en enable it, it says, ah, you need these 20 modules. You're like, ugh. Okay, so you go over to drupal.org and you find the module, you download it, you install it. It says, oh, now you need this one. Ugh. It's like RPM hell all over again, right? So you, you spend two hours going and downloading all of these modules and installing them back up there before you get this feature working. So you've had a very difficult installation. That's another problem with features. Um, the, other, the other thing that we found, and this is especially true with a lot of our client sites that we deploy and we put everything in features, is they go and they change the name of the menu link and suddenly your feature is broken. Not, not broken in the sense that it doesn't work, but it's no longer in a default state, right? So now if I go and I push another change up to the website with features, I can't just revert it because if I revert it, it'll undo anything they did. So you have very poor customizability. Whatever you put into the feature really should stay there. And it made it very hard for clients to customize their stuff. Um, uh, and finally, 
one of the things we find with distribution profiles in particular is um, when, when people install something, they want to see immediately when they install something that looks good, right? You don't want to install the site and come up with a blank page and you're like, well, go ahead and fill in your content, right? People are like, well, this is crap. There's nothing in it. It's just a blank page. I could have done that with Notepad, you know? Well, there's a lot more to it, but you don't know. You, you got to go and you got to write five blog posts and create three uh, news articles and six calendar events. And then suddenly your site gets full and it starts looking really good, right? But until you do that, it just looks like nothing because that's all it is. Nothing. So you could, in Drupal 6 and all the different distributions and stuff, create default content and have it automatically install. Then what problem do you run into? You got to get rid of it. So I go create five new blog posts. Well, I don't want all that default content in there. How do I delete it? Well, I got to go through one by one in the, context, uh, in the contents page and go, I think that was default content, and that was default content. All right, delete all of this. And so it's really hard to get rid of all of the default content once you've actually put your stuff in there. So you've got very poor default content and features. Now, don't get me wrong. I love features. I could not live and work in Drupal without features. They're great for what they work for, for techies like me. They are not good for your average person. They don't understand them. It's too complex. So what is an app? Now this, I, this definition I got from uh, the phase two people who developed apps, and here's what their definition is. And uh, the apps module wraps a layer of usability, meaning discoverability, installation, configuration, and demo content around existing Drupal functionalities. So what we're doing is we're not creating some new concept in Drupal. All we're doing is we're wrapping a layer of usability on top of it. Like I said, I love features. They're awesome. They are truly awesome, but they're too complex. They're not usable by an end user. And apps adds that to features. Now, it's um, and I'll go more into that later. Apps can be features. Features can be apps, but they're not mutually exclusive. So you can have apps without features, and you can have features without apps, and so on and so forth. But I'll go into more of that in a little bit. So discoverability, what does that mean? Um, well, with apps, the apps module includes an app store in it. There's a page that looks uh, very good, and it connects your website to the different app stores out there. So level 10, we're building our own app store where you can see all the different apps we've developed. Phase 2 has an app store that they're developing, and they've got their apps that you can install into your site. Um, I believe Acquia has talked about it, and other people have talked about it as well. But the idea is you're building these nice, th this was the theory behind features, but it never really worked because the installation was so difficult and all the other problems that I talked about. We have features servers out there where you can look and see the features, but we ran into these issues and this is what this solves. So this looks very similar to an iPhone or the Mac app stores, which is pretty cool. Those are, we're, we're all trained already, and if you have an Android, fine, I forgive you, but we're, we're all trained to kind of how these are supposed to look now, right? So here's kind of what the app store looks like. You've got an app right here that's featured. You can see a screenshot of it. Um, you can see these other uh, apps down here. And if I click into one, you can see this one's enabled. That one's available. You can click in. You hit one button install, and it just installs. Magic. Now, this is not stuff that's already on your server. It goes out, it finds all the pieces you need, it downloads them, it installs them, it configures them. It does everything for you. So we'll get into that. It solves the installation problem, like I said. Apps are installed from a remote server and will download all module dependencies as well. So what this means is we build our open enterprise distribution. No longer do I have to build every single feature before I say, all right, it's ready, go install it. Right? I can say, well, <clears throat> we've created our core distribution, which doesn't include any apps, but it includes a link to our app store. Go install it. And as we cr continue to create more and more and better apps and improve our apps, you'll have access to them. Right? And as soon as we publish one, it'll show up in your app store on your website. And as they upgrade, you'll see them on your website. Hey, here's some more that need upgrading. Pretty cool, huh? No longer are we bound by what I ship to you when you download it is what you get, period, until you go download it again. So the other cool thing is you no longer have to worry about what modules you need for an app. 
And app will go out to Drupal.org or wherever you send it and say, uh, I need these 20 modules, and it'll just download all the modules right to your site. You don't even see it. Well, you do. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Done. That's it. <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about that either. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the next problem we run into was configuration. Now, apps start to solve this. I'm not going to say it's a perfect solution yet, but uh, the nice thing that apps have is they have a centralized configuration page <coughs> um, where you can create customizable options. Now, what this means is once you're done installing an app, you see an uh, a settings page. Now, it's great that they have a settings page. The drawback is it's completely hand-coded. There's no easy to set settings for people who are developing apps. Mm -hmm. So if I want to add a customization feature, I have to create the form. I have to create, when I select this option, what does it actually do? I have to build all of that out by hand. So <clears throat> it's a great start that we have this. Implementing it's going to be a challenge. Uh, but we'll get there. And, I'll sh and I'm going to show you all of this stuff, by the way. The other thing it has is it has really great demo content functionality. There's a button on the settings page that says enable demo content. <clears throat> and then the, when you enable the demo content, there's a button that says disable demo content. And if I go and I install the blog app and I enable the demo content and then I add five blog posts and then I disable the demo content, it only disables the demo content. All the other stuff I created stays in there. Pretty cool. So we have a very, very functional way to show people, here's what it's supposed to look like, um, but remove this when you're done. <clears throat> so it solves that problem very well. Um, there you go. So how do you get apps? You, you, right now, all of you guys are probably thinking, this is the coolest thing since sliced bread, right? Yep. Damn right. So how do we get them? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to realize it's Drupal 7 only. It's not going to be on Drupal 6. So you got to have a Drupal 7 site. <clears throat> There's two things you need to get our apps. Uh, first is the apps module, which you can get from Drupal.org. If you download the apps module, and then if you download, now this is a little bit tricky because I haven't published it as a module on Drupal.org. It's a very simple module, but <clears throat> it's called the Level 10 Apps module, and you can get it from GitHub. Just download the zip. And it, all it does is it includes a link to our app store. Now, I, I put in a patch in the apps module so that you could do that because they didn't have one before that. You could only define them in your profile, your installation profile. But I said, we need to <coughs> allow apps or allow other modules to create app stores as well. And so they put that in there. So now we can do that. Or if you want to do it the easy way and just to start playing around with this, we have Open Enterprise 7, which is our distribution. Everything's set up there. All of your base modules um, are there. And I'll get into more of that in a little bit. But it's pretty cool. So anybody want to see a demo of this? <coughs> it is um, pretty cool. So um, let's see. Awesome. That looks just like pretty my cool. computer. <laughs> so what I've got here is this is a, um, a version of Open Enterprise 7 Alpha 2, or Alpha 3, which I just compiled this morning. <clears throat> I've, I've been working on it all weekend trying to get it done because I've been um, unexpectedly out for a while. Um, and how many people have installed Drupal ever? So everybody's pretty familiar with this. If you can install Drupal, you can install Open Enterprise. It's the exact same procedure. Now, I've hidden the um, other minimum and standard installations and whatnot because you don't, if you're installing this, you want Open Enterprise. So I save and continue, pick English. <coughs> David, could you get me some water, please? Thanks. Um, now, if you know, one thing you might notice if you're an eagle, eagle eye person is we're installing 72 modules, which is significantly more than a base Drupal installation. That's because we've included a lot of other stuff for you in our distribution, and I'm going to go over a bit of that um, later, kind of what we included. So we're going to wait for this to install, and I wish, want to show you kind of what it looks like from the beginning. Previously, in our older versions of Open Enterprise, 
um, we would have all of the features in there and it, was, it would give you a selection. Thank you. <clears throat> it would give you a selection of which features you wanted to install in installation time. But since these are apps and they go off of our app store, we don't have to do that anymore. You can install them later. Now we're still working on a system to automatically select some apps to install from our app store, but we haven't got that working yet. <clears throat> It'll be a little bit yet. So this is again the basic installation screen. It's tweaked a little bit here and there, but um, it's more or less the same. So I'm just gonna enter a password. And that's the only thing that's really required now. Everything else is pre-filled for you. Um, and that should complete the installation and bring us to the final screen. <clears throat> it takes a little bit because it's actually doing quite a bit. Yeah? While you're waiting, uh, are you referring to app stores? Is this something that these are only available for purchase or are they all open source? That's an excellent question. The question was, um, when we're referring to app stores, are these things available for purchase or are they all open source, available for free, so on and so forth? Right now, there are no paid app stores. That will change, probably. Um, at this point, all of the stuff we're developing is free. We want to find a way to monetize this because it takes a lot of work to get these things set up. Um, we will have some type of free version available probably always, um, and we, again, we haven't figured out how we're going to monetize this, but we want to monetize this in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, the, it's an excellent point. Uh, when they started developing it, they called it App Store. Um, they now are starting to change the terminology to App Marketplace, but I still call it an App Store because it's an App Store everywhere else, so um, <clears throat> that's an excellent point. Uh, and this is taking a little bit of time. Meh, nah, doesn't matter. Come on. It'll get there. So um, a couple of things we have in our uh, distribution, I'll tell you about real quick while it's turning, is we set up the CK editor WYSIWYG automatically for you out of the box. It's already in there. Nope. Uh, it, we have set up a home page banner slider automatically for you out of the box. We've set up uh, some default content. Um, I'm going to go over at the end of this presentation over some of the philosophy behind what we were going for with our distribution. But we were really striving for simplicity and ease of use. And so we were watching all of the different things that Acquia's, um, the uh, what's the, what's the, their, their cloud thing? Yeah, no, not commons, the gardens. What all the gardens things they were doing to improve usability, a lot of the stuff that's growing into Drupal 7. Um, uh, can somebody open the door? Oh, David's going down. Um, all of that usability stuff that they're doing, is it still going? Um, all of the stuff that they're doing, for usability and things, I'm keeping an eye on that, and I'm and anything that gets backported or made available, I'm putting into Open Enterprise. So you're getting the best of usability improvements in here. Drupal 7 was great, and it is great out of the box, but there's a lot of stuff, and I'll, and I'll show you some of that thing stuff. Come on, what's it taking so long for? Oh, I think I know what it is. Yeah. Start the networking. My error out on me now. <clears throat> so we're waiting for it to install at the moment. taking its sweet time. When I was, um, I don't know if you guys follow our level 10 blog, one of the things that I saw as a need was 
Um, on the blocks page, I've suddenly become in love with blocks again instead of all the other ways to put it on there. But when you're on the blocks page, you couldn't see when a block was visible or not. Right? There was, you, you would put blocks in a region, and then you would say, only put it on this page. But then when you go back to the blocks page, you just see a massive list of blocks, and you couldn't tell what was visible where. So I created the block visibility module that when you go to each block on that page, you could see where it was visible right, on the, right in a column, which was kind of nice. Um, so, wonderfully, Murphy's Law, ah, there it goes, finally. It's taking its sweet time, it's kind of Murphy's Law, when you, I've tested this a million times, and I come to the presentation, it takes forever. All right, so I've changed the, the final screen to say, congratulations, you installed Open Enterprise, blah, 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 and you got two choices, install some apps or go to the home page. Now I could click install apps, but um, I'm actually going to go to the home page so you can see it first. Then we're going to go install some apps because you don't have to do it right away. Um, so now when we go to the home page, you can see some of the default content. Now keep in mind I'm not a themer. This is all default Bartik. So you can see we've got the home page slider going on here. Um, which is really exciting, right? It's already in there. We've got a welcome page that tells you a little bit about it. We've got some demo blocks. We've got some links at the bottom. It includes the privacy policy and terms and conditions and so on and so forth. Um, is it still loading? You know what? I think we had an, um, it didn't install properly. Let me run through the install again real quick. It shouldn't take long this time. If you ever wondered how fast you can redo an install? That's about it right there. I do this about 30 to 40 times a day, so I get really good at it. That's what happens with doing distribution. You just delete the database tables and install again? Yep. And I also do um, a rebuild the distribution, for all the files, and so I've got a Drush make file. And I rebuild that probably 20 times a day. So I get really good at rebuilding a distribution completely from scratch from just a .make file like that. You do it continuously. Hopefully this will go faster this time now that I fixed the network problem. I swear I tested this right before. So you're actually getting two uh, two lessons in one here. One is on apps and the other one is on open enterprise, but they're kind of very tightly linked. So I hope you'll bear with me here. See how long it takes this time. Anybody so time? Enterprise alpha two? Uh, it is now alpha three. Okay. I haven't put a link up yet. I just generated this morning and uh, I haven't had a chance to put the link up yet. Plus, it's still alpha. So, so that's your slider and your demo content? this is alpha three right now. Alpha two does not have all that stuff in it. it yeah. No. If if you actually go to the link and change the two to a three, you'll get it. But um, on Drupal or on, uh, on our site. Uh, oh, that's alpha two for six x. If you go to level ten design dot com slash enterprise slash download, you can see a link to download it. But that's only two. If you change the two to a three, you'll get three. But I haven't made a link to it. That's enterprise slash download. Probably should have tried to figure out why this is taking so long to spin it up a little. But I don't. I know. It'll go. I have faith. Yes. Um, one, I'll go into the philosophy of this in a little bit, but one of them is we want this to work 100% look good in Bartik, which is the default theme. And the theory behind that is if it looks good and it works in Bartik, it should work in your themes. Okay. Now, the, the one caveat, and I actually have it on this home page, when I go to the home page, it's done, it's much faster now, um, is I actually say, it comes up. Um, 
Please note that different themes have different regions and you may have to go to the blocks page and reposition, reposition the blocks into the new regions when switching themes. Um, that's not something I can control as a distribution maker is I put them in the best themes that are available, or the regions that are available in Bartik. Mm -hmm. But if you put a different theme in there, it has different regions and I can't figure that out. That's completely dependent on whoever created your theme. Um, if they create a Bartik compatible theme, then it'll work just perfectly. Otherwise, you're going to have to go change where the blocks are and put them in whatever regions you want. That's the only limitation. That's the only limitation. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. You can use anything else. Uh, I can actually show you that at the end if you want. Um, so here's a basic installation. If you notice, we've got a home link at the top, uh, and that's about it. All right. And if you also notice, you've got add content and you find content up here, and that's it. So I just want to point that out because we're about to install an app. So if when you install the apps module, it creates this apps link up here at the top. <clears throat> Let's click on that. And this brings us to the handy dandy, sorry, my daughter's 18 months old and she loves Blue's Clues. So it's the handy dandy app store. which at this point is actually going out and it's pinging our server and hopefully gets to our server and uh, downloads the list of apps that we have there, which is a currently two, <clears throat> soon to be expanded when I have time. Theoretically, anyways. Um, it's sometimes faster. It's usually faster for me. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, this will actually go to our, because this is hooked into our web store only right now, it'll go to our web store and look at what apps are available and show them to us. It's there. there it goes. Yeah. So there we see the Open Enterprise blog and the development app. The development app, as far as I know, doesn't work at this moment. It might because I, I fixed a bug in our server uh, just recently. The idea behind it is when we're doing development, there's a certain suite of modules we want, like Devel, Admin Menu, uh, Diff, uh, there's a whole bunch of them that we always install coder. And this is, if you, I always end up downloading all of those. Well, I've included them all in one app. Click it. Boom, they're all on your server. Done. All right? <clears throat> Blog, this is the same one. This is just featured, and here it is unfeatured, or in its regular state. And they both stay available. So let's, let's click on one. Thank you. I stole it. We're going to have to make a, a real one. Uh, before we actually fully release everything. I just kind of throw in stuff together. Um, but I think your blogger, it is rated five stars. No, the, the ratings actually don't work at this time. It's just all of them are five star and there's no way to click on them. Um, I, I, we're in progress. I'm not, I don't actually build that part right now. That's a phase two thing. So once they get it working, I'll get it working. And that, and by the way, the ratings is part of the app, mod, app module? Yes. It is. This, everything you see here is part of the apps module. So the apps module shows you everything and <clears throat> handles the installation and, and the interaction with our server and everything. So all of that is handled by the apps module. Um, our server holds the definition of what an app is and where to download everything and it transmits that information to the app store or the apps model module which will then go out and handle everything from there. So the apps module handles everything except for the app server, what it does. <clears throat> what is taking so long? Are you on Twitter? Yes. You only have two apps. What about the Drupal.org? Does it have a lot of apps? Drupal.org does not currently have apps. Uh, that is where you install the apps module, which manages all of this. Oh, okay. Yes, there are there are no apps currently on Drupal.org. Hey, um, can you move clear to the um, If you can do that without messing up Tom, he's recording it through it. Let's try clicking on it. What again. are we doing? If I move level ten guest to the T1, is that going to screw you up? Because the clear yes. is clear is bombed. Yes, it will. Um, you know, are you not plugged in? I don't know if it is. I downloaded. I don't down, just downloaded Open Enterprise and download fine. And I'm on it. Yep. So now I think something else might be going on. This was really snappy before. 
I'm actually I'm on a different internet connection than I was testing with earlier. And yeah, the problem is I'll lose my I'll lose the screen. Uh, um, well, Tom needed me on it so he could screencast while he's recording all of this. Um, so he needed me on the other network, and I uh, didn't bother to test it. Well, we'll just let it spin for a little bit. Um, yeah, David, I'm getting a decent download speed. Yeah. yeah anybody going to Drupal Camp Austin? Forward. Travis? Maybe. A few more people. I think the site opened today. I'm going to go register. Oh, I did? Present a, a session. Well, while that's spinning, I'll go into uh, what it takes to build an app. Um, as I said, apps are an extension of a module, very similar to how a feature is an extension of a module. <clears throat> so basically, everything in Drupal is a module that you write. You create a module or a theme. And features are special modules. They're modules with extensions within them that are still modules. But they're special modules that know how to talk to features. Apps are very similar. They're just modules that know how to talk to app stores. That's all it is to it. So what does that include? And, well, any module can be an app. And this is something that's a little bit confusing. This includes, but is not limited to, features. Features are an excellent starting point for apps, but you don't have to start with a feature. You can create a module and make it an app. You can create a feature and make it an app. Doesn't matter. They both can be. But <clears throat> every one that I've made so far has been a feature. That's just been a great way to do it. So what you add to your module is you add your module name .app .inc, and this will automatically be included by the apps module, so you don't have to manually include it, like in your module file. And hook, oh, and by the way, to all of you uh, newer Drupal people, this is where I get a little more technical. You can tune me out. It's OK. Um, I, it doesn't last long. So <clears throat> the only thing you need is this hook, hook apps app info. And this hook apps app info tells the apps module about your app. It tells it just a few things. It tells it, this is what you put in there. This is from their apps.api.php. You return an array and you tell it what your demo content description is. This tells it that what app or add demo content will do. It is placed on the configure form. So it's just a description text telling them about your demo content. Um, the only other ones I use are demo content module, which is a module which contain, contains your demo content, and your configure form. And you send it a form name. That's it. It's all you need. Two little things. And it tells it everything you need about it. All the magic happens in the app server. But apps are very, very simple to build from an um, uh, app perspective. So let's head back and see. Ah, we got there, finally. So now you see. Open Enterprise blog. And you can include up to five screenshots down here. All right, so I can screenshot through them. You can see the ratings. You can see the version information, the author. This should look very, very familiar to any iPhone or Mac App Store users. It's completely designed around it. And there's a nice little install button at the top. Anybody want to click that? Sure. See how easy it is? Install. Do you have to set up like FTP stuff? Excellent question. One thing I haven't touched on yet, um, right now, the way that it does it is you have to give full right access to your sites directory. Oh, lovely. <clears throat> For you security people, you're freaking out right now. Yes, and rightly so. Uh, this is not. Just to install or, or forever? Just for the install. So that's, it's just during the install, anytime you need to install or upgrade. Um, this is, apps are still in a very early state. And that's the way they've implemented it. Now they're working on long term the same way, you can see it start to do its magic, the same way that the upgrade module or the update module and the install module installs and all of that uh, do their installs, eventually this will work the same way. So you won't have to give right access to your site's mo uh, folder. It's not that way right now. So um, <clears throat> that is what it is. Um, we'll so do you, are you going to like put like any, uh, maybe at least some, you know, like what the, 
the, the settings uh, section does with your site settings.php, where it's like a big red box that says you are not secure. Are you going to at least do something like that that says you need to? Yeah, it? it's really difficult because we're, we're, we're juggling usability versus security. Um, you know, this, is, this installation is really geared towards helping new people get started and getting stuff installed. Um, which is great, but if we start throwing up error messages and saying, now you need to make your site's directory writable, now you need to secure it, now you need to make it writable, now you need to secure it, and you, you go back and forth, it's going to scare people off. <clears throat> um, I haven't quite figured out what to do here yet. Um, I'm really hoping that we get the proper installation system in, enabled really quick, and that way we don't have to worry about it anymore. Until then, well, I'm, you know, basically, I'm just saying, do this on your demo site until you get it right, and then when you move it over to your live, secure it properly. Um, kind of problematic, but okay. It is what it is. So, um, and again, this is running slow. So, how would you how would you fix that? Like, I mean, is there like any type of thing that you can do with certs to like the certificates that you? Can you know, I don't really know. I know that the the update module does it. And I think what I, well, I think, think you have to put in your FTP information for that, though. Yes, what they do is they'll actually use the web browser to do an FTP into your server to send the files or SSH in to your server to put the files in, which is a much more secure way of doing it. Right. Um, so I'm hoping eventually this will do the same thing. Yeah. Right now it doesn't. You have to put full write directory into your site's folder. So this will fail if people, oh, but you're, you're, the download automatically comes with the sites. Um, and come on. I don't want to touch anything because I want to break it again. Believe me, it doesn't usually take this long unless you have a really slow computer. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. <clears throat> but eventually it does complete. It was one touch. I just hit install and it went. Um, now I get to the settings page for the blog app. And I, already, I see enable de demo content. And this is my settings form. And the only thing I have right now is uh, create a blog post page. Click here. Now I can add whatever I want in here using the forms API and all of that stuff. So I've got a fully configurable form right here that people know if I want to mess with the app, change the way it works, go here and there's all my settings. I haven't implemented it, but it's there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and en enable the demo content which again is a button click. And it goes and it installs. And it shouldn't need to download. <clears throat> I'll do a network restart just for fun. Ah, Murphy's Law, I tell you what. Um, I am not immediately involved. I've been talking with the developers a little bit, and I've been submitting bugs. But other than that, I haven't been. Um, I probably will get much, much more involved um, pretty shortly as I start to get more and more into it. Um, I really want to have some conversations with them and figure out where, th where it's going um, so I can help with that a bit. Well, while it's loading, I'm going to go to another page so we can at least start looking around the site. Uh, the blog module is installed now. Let's try this. No, I don't want to do that. Um, and if you notice, <clears throat> oh, I guess it's done. Um, we now have a blog tab up there too, right? So we've now added a whole feature to our site, which is blogs. And since we included the demo content, there's our demo content. We've got some demo blogs. They have images. They have tags. Um, everything's right there. Pretty cool. Uh, with one click, I've now added my blog. With one other click, I added my demo content. Everything's just kind of working slowly, but it's working. Um, if you also notice, I pointed out before, we only had um, add content and find content. 
content. Now we have add blog posts and administer blogs. So if I click on add blog posts, anybody ever played with WordPress? Go ahead and admit it. Anybody think WordPress is a good blogging engine? Yeah, yeah it's a pretty good blogging engine. So I had a good idea. When I'm creating a blog app for Drupal, what should I emulate? WordPress. WordPress, why not? They, they've done a lot of money, used a lot of money studying what the best way to blog is. Uh, it's not a perfect clone, but I've done a lot of the different things to kind of try and emulate it. So if you see on my, in my blog app, brand new install, there's a WYSIWYG editor. Not only that, <clears throat> we've got three text formats. It's default, it's a filter. If I go to plain text, my WYSIWYG goes away. It's just plain text. If I go to full HTML, I get a much expanded WYSIWYG with all the options. If I go to like, oops. if I go to filter it again, the only buttons I see at the top are the ones that are gonna make it through my filtered filter. So it's kind of fun. It's one of the, some of the little things that we've done in Open Enterprise. Now, if you've ever used WordPress, you'll see there's my tags, there's my categories. Um, I can, um, it was funny, when I was creating the demo content this morning, it was very weird to me to be creating a node and push the publish button. Because what is it usually? Save. Right? And all of a sudden it was like, publish. And I was really having a hard time pushing it, and it's like, this is what normal people do on WordPress is they push the publish button. And then there's save as draft and preview, which is very, very different nomenclature. Drupal by default has very scary words on these, or confusing words on these um, different content types. So it's kind of fun to have tweaked it as much as I have and, and emulated it. So again, if, you, if you've ever been on WordPress, they have a really good admin screen too, right? Um, which apparently isn't showing up now. Well, I'll have to find that and fix it. I have a really great admin view too that looks very much like WordPress, but for whatever reason, it's kind of disappeared. So I'll have to look, hunt that down afterwards and find it. But anyways, so going back to the apps concept, we've just installed an app and it's kind of there. Now let's, cr let's create a blog post and kind of see what the default content looks like. And I'm just gonna do something simple. simple. And there's our test blog post. I go back to the blog page, there it is, right? Very simple. Now, as we've started to fill it out, we want to get rid of that demo content. We go back to apps. And hopefully this goes a little faster, which it's not. Well, I don't think I'm going to wait around for this. But suffice to say, <coughs> it, oh, I just closed it. Um, suffice to say, it eventually if you click that disable button, it'll disable the contents, um, but it's just going to take all day to do that. So um, let's talk a little bit about Open Enterprise because, like I said, you can install the apps module. You can install our level 10 apps. Uh, you can fiddle around with all the settings and whatnot, and it's a little bit confusing. Um, things should work. Can't guarantee it. It really depends on how, what modules you have and whatnot. Or if you go with our distribution, everything just flat out of the box works. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Open Enterprise and what we were trying to accomplish with it. <clears throat> First of all, we wanted to have efficiency in our thing, or in our distribution. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. We also wanted to have standardization and follow a lot of the standards. Um, in, in the wild, wild west days of Drupal, before we had a lot of standards, everybody kind of went off on their own, did a lot of coding, wrote a lot of stuff, and then we have to maintain it. And we had a lot of con collisions and conflicts and stuff like that. And we found if we start following a lot of the standard practices and, and stuff, it simplifies things a lot. Scalability, we want it to be able to be deployable and be able to scale out. And I'm not talking from an efficiency point of view from like serving web pages, but from a, um, allowing other, it to be used across lots of sites scalable. 
Um, and extensibility. One of the things we found also was extensibility of old systems was very difficult. So efficiency, what does this mean? It means we wanted to, so users can do things quickly, easily, and without repeating themselves. We wanted to take a lot of the basic things that people were constantly doing. I don't know how many stupid times I had to set up a blog system for a website. Why? Or a news feed, news content type, news view, RSS feed. I did it again and again and again. And we, want to make, we wanted to make open enterprises as efficient as possible. We, don't, we want to take a lot of the confusing stuff and get rid of it. And that includes clicks. There's been a lot of, this is where the, a lot of the UX stuff comes in. Our, yeah, so the first thing we wanted is we wanted to make a very, very small core in our efficiency. This allows us to keep the, the distribution up to date because we're not doing massive features and lots and lots of modules and ensuring that everything works all the time. It's a lot of work. In fact, unless you have um, the build testing, it's just it's going to be very hard to maintain by hand. Uh, so the idea was include as little as possible in core that we can get away with. Um, and one of the things we, we use to judge those is um, anything that was very commonly used for building features or building kind of the Legos of the site, we included those in there. For example, views we put in there because you can't have a Drupal site without views, really. And a lot of um, fields modules, like the link module and the, the options modules and the, 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 the ones that you want to use to build your content types, we included all of those because obviously they're very useful. Um, Another thing we wanted to do in the efficiency standpoint is we wanted to keep it very, very, very simple. And like I told you, um, I've gone through and I've looked at all the different usability improvements that are being worked on, that are in Drupal Gardens, that uh, are in Acquia Gardens, and I'm, I'm finding all of those and I'm moving those in as well. So there's a lot of little modules that do cool stuff, the block visibility being one of them. Um, there, one of, if you've ever watched the usability findings from uh, University of Minnesota, one of the things they talk about is when people go into the menu, there's an edit menu, add links, and view links, I think, are, all, are the three links that are in there, maybe like a delete. <clears throat> and people would always click edit menu thinking that's where you're going to find your links. All right, guys. Which was really confusing. And so somebody wrote a module that combines it all into one edit menu and gets rid of that other stuff. So I know if I want to change the links in a menu, I hit edit menu and I get the change the title, change the links, everything is all in one place. It's a lot less or a lot more, a lot less confusing. It's a lot more simple. Um, so I've looked all over the place. There's a lot of stuff that's going into D8, Drupal 8. There's actually a, a backports module in Drupal 7 that pulls a lot of those usability changes in. I've included that. Um, all of those kind of things I can find. Anything that makes it simpler, easy, less confusing, I'm pulling that all in into Drupal. Um, oh, one, one good one. Does anybody like the modules page? I've already talked about it a little earlier. It is confusing. The only way to find something is control F and start typing the name. But even that's bad because it's listed as a dependency under every single module. So you type the name, next, 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 next. Ah, there it is. That's the only way to find stuff, right? Well, there's a module that rearranges the way it's configured. It's no longer sorted by your categories. It's now core, alphabetical, everything else, alphabetical. Simple change, but it makes a huge difference. They use it on Drupal Gardens or Acquia Gardens or whatever it's called now. Um, those little things, little things like that all over the place that I've included. I also include a great admin theme called um, Tau and Rubik. So Rubik is running as our default admin theme, and you probably saw that. Um, make it very um, efficient from a usability standpoint also. Um, we want to have no confusing settings. One of the things that we were very guilty of is we're engineers, and we design for engineers. And we, our website's notorious for this. Oh, you want to add a training course? Yeah, first you have to add a venue here and put in the address. Then you have to add this thing over here. Then you have to add the training under here, here, and this content type, all four content types, and you have to link them together. And if you do all of that, people can register and pay. That's OK as long as somebody's around to tell us how it works, and you know, we can train interns and stuff to do it. 
But if I give you guys something like that, you're going to go, and it's never going to happen, right? So we want to make sure we limit the amount of complexity. Uh, one place we were guilty of this also was blog profiles. In order to have, you can have multi-user blogs in Drupal, as unlike WordPress. I think they may have some stuff now. But um, so in order to create a multi-user blog, you had to make a blog profile. So if I wanted to get on there, I create a user account for you, go. Oh, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to go in there, put in your, your first name and your last name, upload a picture, and do all this other stuff. You know, so it just really gets very confusing before you can use it. So, and we obviously want to make it so you can easily add apps and features. And have a good WYSIWYG editor. Standardization. So we want to conform to the best practices and community standards. So we only use contributed modules and apps and features. We have no custom module in our code. Any custom module that we write, we write it in a generic fashion for Open Enterprise. We write it in a generic fashion and put it on Drupal.org. That way, everything we're using is in contrib. Now, most large Drupal site, uh, web developers do this. And that's where a lot of these modules come from, is we have, a, we have an itch, and we scratch it, and we put it on Drupal.org. Uh, block visibility is a great example. That's just the latest one that I've done. Um, I was like, man, I wish I knew where these modules were, or these blocks were visible. Boom, there's a module. Now, are you saying that you wouldn't even have one custom module in an invisible site? Nope. Well, in, in our distribution. In, our, in, the, in the sites we build for our clients, we do have custom okay. modules. Okay. <clears throat> but for our distribution, we have no custom modules. Now, we write custom code in our feature modules. But we don't have any custom modules. There's no magic code in there except for features. Um, so all of our apps and features, we make sure they conform to the kit standard. And if you guys don't know about that yet, it's available Drupal.org project kit. Uh, it just defines a lot of ideas for here's how you, if we follow all these rules, we'll limit the amount of collisions that happen. Um, and that helps quite a bit. <clears throat> We want to make sure that all the HTML we're outputting is clean and usable. Uh, and with the new views for Drupal 7, this helps a lot. For Drupal 6 and views 2, we had a horrible HTML that was being output by viewers all the time. It was wrapped in many, many divs that you really couldn't um, theme very well. You, are in, you, you ended up with div class equals title instead of an H2, which is what it really, H2 or an H3, which is really what it should be, right? With views three, we now can customize that and wrap it in an H3. And now when I say in my style, in my theme, in my style sheets, an H3 should look like this, I can output a view that actually looks like that without having to go in and add another <coughs> div title equals the same thing. Um, and make sure we're all using standard classes. The other thing we want to do is scalability, which means operations can be done in a deployable and repeatable fashion. And this means we can deploy with Agar. Everything is built from a .make file, which is interesting because I have like 10 different patch files in there because I find bugs and find patches or make patches and do that too. Those all come in the distribution. Don't have to worry about that. Um, apps from the app server. I want to make sure we can upgrade between minor versions. This is something I'm very bad at. I tend to build a new version and say, forget it. If you want to upgrade, upgrade yourself. But I'm trying to get to the point where everything is now upgradable between minor versions. Not major versions. That's too hard. And extensibility can easily be customized and extended. This is one of the things we ran into again and again and again as we would deliver a site to a client and they couldn't extend it. Or if they did, it made it impossible for us to later come back and update their website. <clears throat> this primarily was. Um, in the theme, we want to make it 100% Bartik compatible. Every time I'm developing, I always do it in Bartik now for this distribution. I want it to make sure it looks good in there. And then I'm going to go test it in other themes and see how it looks. The idea is I want no custom CSS hacks that don't work in Bartik. Uh, one of the things we used to do is we create a theme with our distribution. And we are doing that as well. But then our distribution only worked in our theme which made it really hard for somebody to install another theme. Because all of the CSS stuff that made the site work was in our theme. And you have to go tear that apart to figure out what's going on. And all of the distributions are like this. OpenAtrium was really bad at this. Great distribution, but you could not install another theme on there. Because half of the stuff that the site did was in the theme. 
All the drag and drop stuff was in the theme. So the idea is we make everything work on Bartik, and if we do that, it should make it so you can install any theme. Um, all blocks should be movable without breaking features. I've gone into this a little bit. The idea is it used to be if you tried to move a block, your features would become overridden and make it really complicated. Menus, same way. Uh, we should make sure that it works with all contrib modules that are stable. And images and media should be easy to use and reuse. Haven't gotten all of these things done yet, but we're getting there. Um, let, before I get into questions, let me just show you some of the modules that I've installed by default. Uh, <clears throat> so there's like the, um, I don't know why you can see these, but the backup and migrate module, the um, block visibility, C tools, date, default content, um, email registration, entity, entity cache, features, field group, global redirect, HTML purifier, IMCE, libraries, link. Basically, all of the simple modules, they don't really do a lot, but they're kind of libraries for building sites or fixing some type of deficiency in Drupal. And that's all the kinds of stuff I've included in here. Um, the last thing I want to show you real quick is the uh, blog module. Um, and here is my, well, this is what makes my blog module an app, besides the app server, OK? And you, you can see I've got the configure form and the demo content module. And that's all there is to it. The, um, <clears throat> Inside of enter Enterprise Blog, you see there's Enterprise Blog Content, which is another module that contains the content. And then inside of this, I say Enterprise Blog Content is the name of the module that contains the content. So there's that. And this is the name of the configure form. And here is my configure form. And that's all there is to it. That's all that makes it an app. Um, now, if you're developing apps, there's... Uh, there's um, manifest and stuff like that you can use to develop some stuff. But uh, really, that magic should live on the app server, uh, which is a lot more complex to go over. And I'm not going to go that right now. So does anybody have questions? I've already answered a bunch. But um, this is some cool stuff. Alan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and that's you know there's sort of a debate about how long that should continue or if it's even still valid. So, okay, so then now we have app stores where you can easily <coughs> bypass that in a way that's much more structured than it's ever been, right? So how's that affecting the sort of ecosystem for developers? That's an excellent question. The question basically. Um, is, you know, Drupal.org is the established place for vetted code where you go to get stuff. Uh, now we're seeing app stores, and we had feature servers, and the same debate was with it. Um, how is that going to affect going to Drupal.org to find stuff? Um, that's an excellent question. I don't know that I have a whole answer to that. Um, it is, and, and the general um, agreement is we're not going to fork the community. We're, we're, we're dedicated to Drupal.org being the place that we go to find stuff. Now, um, I don't know how much everybody is committed to that. The general feeling is that we are. The problem is you can't build distributions on Drupal.org. You can, technically, but um, due to certain copyright limitations and whatnot, I can't put Open Enterprise on Drupal.org. I have the project there, but I can't make a build of it there for various legal reasons. Correct. I can, I can put the Git repository there, but in order to build something you can download, I can't do it. Uh, and that's true for every single distribution. That's why all the distributions are actually, they have pages on Drupal.org, but in order to get it, you have to go off the site to some other site to download it. Why? It's all open source. <clears throat> The, there are limitations to uh, the code, all kinds of, they, like, 
I include different libraries from outside sources, the jQuery cycle, uh, different things that make stuff work that everybody has to include. Well, not has to, but that pretty much everybody puts on their website just because it's great code, but it's not original, my work, Drupal.org compatible, and therefore it can't be there. Um, I don't make the rules. Uh, but that, so that's the first problem we have is there's a lot of stuff we can't put on Drupal.org, but it's ridiculously helpful and useful to users. So we run, we're running into this problem of, um, and, and I don't know what the, ans the solution and the answer is. And the other thing is the speed of development on Drupal.org has slowed down quite a bit because there's so much legacy, there's so much effort involved in making them widespread. So for example, if we wanted to make an app store on Drupal.org, how many years is it going to be until we get that to happen? Now, if somebody like Phase 2 or Acquia really got behind it, it could probably happen fairly quickly. <clears throat> if, if barring somebody with a lot of money putting some time and resources into it, it's never going to happen. So at that point, we've got to have that split out. I mean, that's really the only thing. Now, all of the modu modules that we use, well, almost all of the modules, are hosted on Drupal.org, except for the stuff that we write, like our features and stuff we don't put on Drupal.org. To this day, there's no features server on Drupal.org. You can put a feature up as a module, but there's, I mean, we're two years plus into it, and it still doesn't integrate well. I wish that it did, and I wish we could find the time to make it work, but it just doesn't. So um, we'll see how it turns out. I, I, you know, everybody's committed to making Drupal.org as great and as discoverable as possible, but we'll see what happens. It's, it's got to be the tool. I think the Git migration helped quite a bit. Any other questions? I don't want to go on too long about that. How do you upgrade stuff once you get the map running? Great question. How do you upgrade stuff? Good question. Available updates. You click on it, and it says currently under development. <laughs> that's, just what, that's what I got for you so far. Uh, so there's a button, but it doesn't do anything. But wait, that doesn't do anything because your app doesn't do it? Or no, no, the apps module the app isn't ready. Isn't there, isn't there yet. Okay. There's, um, there's still debate going on about like, what happens when you click uninstall. Do you remove all of the module dependencies? So we're trying to figure all that out. Or smarter minds than I are trying to figure it out at least. Any other questions? Anybody excited? Anyone want to go build some apps? Anybody want me to go build some apps? <laughs> um, I'll write that URL down just so you can see it. Hopefully, we should get a link up. Tom, you should have a link up to Alpha 3 tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do that. So it's www.level10. Design.com slash enterprise slash download. And with the download link for tar gzip, if you change it from a 2 to a 3, you'll get it. Tomorrow we'll have the 3 link up. But That's the open enterprise? Yes. Cool. Uh, so... So this right here, um, this, uh, where's the link? That's it. That's it. Oh, it's off the page, but um, if you change this alpha 2 to alpha 3, it's there. There's just no link to it. So it'll download. And we'll get that fixed tomorrow. Any other questions? You can press that edit button right there. I could. <laughs> That's right. Oh my gosh, who wrote this, Tom? <laughs> wow. It is actually copy from Drupal.org. I tried it. Do I see a table tag in there? Yes. Less, less than 
Andy Moore doing? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the date today? All right, we now have a link. It's available for you to download. Ta da! It's not 9.3 megs, but. Oh. Nope. I don't want anything to fail in this presentation. <laughs> uh, I can. Uh, they're on Google Docs right now. We'll, we'll put them up on SlideShare. Yeah. Okay. Put them up on Tutor TV. Put them up on Tutor TV, yeah. Well, that's what I got. Thanks, everybody, for coming.